My name is Wilhelm Kanders. Uh, I'm uh, the founder, uh, one of the co-founders and uh, presidents of Toptica Photonics AG in Germany. Uh, we are based just outside of Munich. Um, we are a company that has been enjoying um, a nice growth over the last uh, 15 years. I am a, a laser physicist, so I've been working, or a physicist in general, I've been working in cold atoms uh, for my PhD. Um, cold atoms was a field which was not really developed, but uh, people were fascinated by the dream of having uh, cold atoms, laser cooled atoms in free space and vacuum, so you can look at them uh, with ultimate resolution for a very long period of time. Uh, and, but nobody could foresee that huge and the very nice development that this field has taken. Um, I was building 10 lasers during my PhD. As you know, PhD students are not only used for making research, they are also used as workforce. Uh, and uh, I think that sort of gave me the technical edge uh, to actually start a company based on this product, although I was not originally planning to do it. I was hired uh, by a company that wanted to build uh, diodes into medical equipment, but they, they hired the wrong guy for the wrong job and uh, it turned out that my idea was able to survive in a different context which then gave me the opportunity to go in as as an owner to structure this company the former company uh, kept uh, some of the ownership and jointly in this sort of interplay between an established company and a young striving uh, entrepreneurial approach we were able to capture quite a bit of the market based on the growth of this laser cooling community. And then the fiber laser came in, and so step by step, we've been increasing the complexity, uh, maintaining the challenge, um, and if you are in a high cost environment like Munich, I think that's a good recipe to survive. It's very demanding on the company to structure the growth, uh, to establish various levels of responsibilities, but we still try to maintain a very family style of operation uh, with a shared responsibility and with everybody being able to address the problems that are uh, apparent for everybody. I think that's very typical for this uh, industry which is very small company uh, structured. We are blessed by uh, the situation that the ESO is very close to our um, head office. So when ESO was having laser questions they came to us very early. Um, it was all about using high power lasers uh, specifically tuned to the sodium resonance and uh, they shine these high power lasers up to the sky in 100 kilometer height they produce an artificial they use the uh, the existing sodium layer as an artificial screen where they can image this point like structure that's projected from the bottom of the laser as a corrective means for their telescope and that's been very exciting uh, going on now since uh, three years in a very intense phase where we have a production contract and we build for the very large telescope, the VLT, we built uh, four lasers plus a replacement laser that will be ready in the summer. So very exciting, uh, very, uh, it's, it's a little bit of the holy grail of laser physics to build these lasers and with the opportunities that we have in-house and the recent developments in fibers, that's uh, now doable. In uh, Germany, the, uh, the, the, s the distance between the research institutions, the universities and their students um, is not that, that complicated when it is about getting patents, technology, um, taking, making use of the, uh, the infrastructure that a university can offer. For the starting phase, that's very important. So the incubation happens within the university itself, where there is a certain space in which you can grow in until you can establish and afford these equipments yourself. Um, I think mentality-wise, that's also true for the US, um, but I think it's not as obvious for, for Japanese Asian companies, is the openness to attract, to attract or to um, speak to the global market from the very first day on. I think in the laser world to survive you have to have a global product at a very early stage and you need the mentality, the openness to do this. Photonics uh, 21, uh, they give a voice to, to a community without um, being biased by one or the other side. This is a very nice balance between academia and industrial representation. 
Um, I think the community um, is well served if these structures are not only able to, um, to ask for support, to mandate support for the industry, but also make decisions on what they think needs to have a focus on. Because politicians, I think they need these guidelines. They're willing to give and support an industry, but they're not the ones that can make decisions on what is more important and what not. So, um, I think it should not only be um, people that, that make money available, they should also structure decisions. There should be community decisions and priority decisions, and sometimes that seems to be lacking. In uh, Europe we have these organizational representations at all levels. There is Photonics 21, there is EPIC, which is more on the industrial representation. Then we go down to the national level and we even have a local level. We have a Bavarian representation uh, that's trying to uh, express the voice of a photonics industry. It may be a little bit too much to sustain unless the, uh, the photonics industry grows as people foresee it to grow. We'll be happy to support that. Well, Toptica I think has been enjoying a steady growth. Um, particularly we are strong scientifically rooted. Uh, we have made business plans which have been changing rapidly during the year because the market has changed. Um, but due to the uh, the richness of uh, approaches, we always found one market that was strong enough to carry us through and even gave us some momentum. Uh, right now we had a very strong last quarter, so we are looking into the market very optimistically.